Okay, the uh, video today is about installing a replacement ignition on Briggs engines. Uh, the replacement ignition uses a, a failed uh, magneto for the source of the trigger signal, which is fairly unique. And it uh, uses the uh, my usual GM LS2 ignition module for the, uh, the rest of the ignition. The video is in two parts. Uh, the new today, is, which is September 22, installations on a single cylinder. Uh, it's a Briggs model 243431. Uh, the type is 0123 space 01. And the code number is 6709181. The uh, original ignition here, I disconnected all the kill wires and uh, cranked it with the starter motor and never did get a spark out of it. So what I'm going to do is just remove the whole thing and replace it with, a, with the replacement ignition. Okay, I, uh, I picked a, an old magneto around that it had the... Um, the high voltage secondary winding was open, so I just clipped off the spark plug wire and uh, decided to use that. Um, this connection over here originally was for the kill wire. It goes directly to the primary winding, so it's very convenient for us just to pick up the voltage we need right here. I use a, a spade connector just to uh, do a, a quick connect to that. That connector is crimped crimped and soldered to a, a diode. The diode happens to be a 1N4006 and the other end of the diode which has the band on it is connected to a, a, a terminal post and in turn connected to the green wire that goes off to the input to the ignition coil. Before I mounted the uh, ignition coil on the engine here I ran it on the engine simulator, and in both cases I have a piece of scrap aluminum, about 18 thousandths of an inch. I use as a shim to set the air gap between the, uh, the trigger coil, which sort of looks like an old magneto, and the flywheel. Uh, with that air gap of 18 thousandths, the first spark, the advanced spark, occurred at 290 RPM. So that seems just about uh, about right to me. I also checked with a timing light the timing. If you look really close, you might be able to see a timing mark on the, uh, the mount for the ignition coil here. There's also a timing mark on the flywheel, an arrow here. So uh, the timing light indicated that the, the timing was just slightly ahead of, this was just slightly ahead of the, uh, the timing mark on there. So that's very close, you know, it's off a degree or so, but that should be fine. For the ignition module, uh, I found a, a piece of sheet metal on the top of the engine, and I just used that to mount the, uh, the ignition module on that. On the, uh, on the ignition module, the, the red wire here is on the top, uh, and the uh, that goes off to the battery because it's battery powered ignition. The green wire is a trigger signal that comes from the, the trigger which sort of resembles a magneto. It's underneath the flywheel. And the black wire is a ground wire. It just goes over here to the mounting bolt to, uh, to, to mount that. So installation is so simple I don't really make circuit diagrams.
this unit, which is the ignition coil and all the electronics necessary to drive it, was uh, was made by WVE. You can go to WVE.com, get some more. I buy it from Rock Auto. The, uh, the part number is 5C1083. It cost about $22. So, uh, with the current economy, and you know, by the time you go to buy one, it probably costs twice that much. On the uh, ignition module or ignition coil, uh, there's a little knob for on the side or for a latch for the connector that is supposed to be used, and you can put the red wire. At, it would be at the top if you you have it set up that way. The green wire is the second one down. Uh, that's the uh, trigger coil input, and the black wire is both the, both black and brown. They pick up the ground connections, and the ground connections just go off to the, the bolt here.